word to Luke chapter 1. Let's bow in prayer. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who wrote it. Thank you we can trust the Word of God. Now help us as we study it and read it together, and may it become very practical in our lives. Some of our listeners are going through difficult times. They are burdened. Give them a song today. As we study together, we pray for the Spirit of God to help us. In Jesus' name, amen. What a contrast there is between Zacharias, the old priest in Jerusalem, and Mary, the humble Jewish virgin from Nazareth. You'll recall that Zacharias doubted God's word and was struck dumb. Luke chapter 1 and verse 20, Gabriel said to him, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Unbelief always closes our mouths. I believe, therefore have I spoken, said the psalmist, and Paul quoted those words. Faith opens your mouth in a song. When you believe God, you want to praise God. Well, he doubted God's word, but Mary believed God's word, and she burst into song, as she visited the house of Elizabeth, her kinswoman. We're reading now from Luke chapter 1 and verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree." He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Now that is some song. And this song that Mary sang really came from her heart. It's a song that's filled with praise and joy, even though she knew she would endure shame and suffering and and misunderstanding. Mary sang for the same reasons that you and I ought to be singing today. Did you notice that she sang because of salvation? Verse 47, My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary was saved by faith, by the grace of God, just as you and I are saved by grace and through faith. Salvation ought to give to us a song. You know, if you aren't saved, you have nothing to sing about. Oh, you may join in the songs of this world, but they aren't going to last very long. It's interesting to note that we read a great deal about singing and praising in heaven, not much about preaching, if anything at all. Uh, We preachers are not going to be doing a lot of preaching up in heaven, but we're going to be doing a lot of singing. And let's get started today in being ready to praise God. She praised Him because of salvation. She praised Him because of the Holy Spirit of God. Mary had been touched by the Holy Spirit, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And you know, when the Spirit of God fills your life, you want to have a song. The Word of God says in Ephesians 5, 18, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Mary had a song because of salvation and because of the Spirit, and she had a song because of the Scriptures. When you read this beautiful hymn of praise given in Luke chapter 1, And when you trace the cross-references, you discover that Mary really knew her Bible. There are at least 15 Old Testament allusions or quotations in these few verses. Now, I don't think that Mary owned a copy of the Old Testament Scriptures. She was a poor 
maiden from uh, Nazareth, and the Jewish people didn't own Bibles such as we do today, but she had the Word in her heart. That's why she sang. Colossians chapter 3 says in verse 16, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Because Mary's heart was filled with the Word of God, she had a song. Well, here are three reasons why Mary was singing, because of salvation and because of the Spirit and because of the Scriptures. It's interesting to note how her song parallels the song of Hannah back in 1 Samuel chapter 2. When Hannah was told she was going to have a son, and she brought that son and gave him to the Lord, what a joyful experience it was, and she sang praises to God. Well, Mary knew that song. Mary identified with Hannah in that experience. If you and I are saved, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and if we're filled with the Scriptures, with the Word of God, we're going to have a song. But there's a fourth reason why Mary sang, and that's because she was surrendered to the Lord. You know, it's wonderful to know the Scriptures, but if we aren't surrendered to do the Word of God, we don't have a song. Verse 38 of Luke chapter 1, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, the slave of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Oh, I should pray that prayer every day. Lord, here's your slave. Now, run my life according to your word. You see, Mary surrendered herself completely to the Lord. In verse 38, she gave the Lord her body. She said, here I am, I'm going to be your slave. Here is my body. And the Holy Spirit of God overshadowed her body, and she conceived the very Son of God in her womb. But she also gave God her soul. Verse 46, Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And she gave God her spirit. Verse 47, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. In other words, spirit, soul, and body, Mary was completely yielded to the Lord. And that is what opened up those deep wellsprings of joy so that Mary had a song for the Lord. Now, if you don't have a song today, it may be you aren't saved. You need to trust Jesus. He hath put a new song in my heart, even praise unto my God. When you trust the Lord Jesus, he gives you a song. Or it may be you're grieving the Holy Spirit. There's something in your life that's grieving God's Spirit. Well, you can't have the joy of the Lord if you're grieving the Spirit of the Lord. Or it may be that we are ignoring the Word of God. If we don't have God's Word dwelling in us richly, richly, in in great abundance, we really will not be able to praise the Lord. And if we're not surrendered, maybe there's some rebellion in our lives. You know, folks go to church to worship God, and they're standing there in the congregation singing, but they're just going through the motions. It's not really coming from their hearts. Well, it came from Mary's heart because she knew the Lord and was yielded to Him. Now, it's interesting to note that this song does not praise Mary. It magnifies the Lord. Verse 46 of Luke chapter 1, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Eight times in this song you find Mary saying, He hath, He hath. She tells what God has done, what God has done in His mercy and in His grace. It magnifies the Lord. In fact, there are three stanzas to this hymn, and in each stanza Mary tells us something that God has done and uh, magnifies the work of the Lord. Now, it's interesting to note that Mary points out three recipients of the grace and mercy of God. I want you to notice this now. In verses 46 through 49, she tells what God has done for her. So the first stanza focuses on what God has done for Mary. Verses 46 through 49. And then in verses 50 through 53, she focuses on what God has done for all who fear him. Notice in verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. That includes us. We are included in Mary's song. And so in verses 46 through 49, what God did for Mary. 
verses 50 through 53, what God is doing for us, all who fear him. And then verses 54 and 55, what he has done for his people Israel. Notice then the three recipients of the blessings of God, Mary, verses 46 through 49, all who fear him, verses 50 through 53, and then his people Israel, verses 54 and 55. Let's look right now at what God did for Mary, verses 46 through 49. She makes two statements about God's blessing in her life. Number one, God has been mindful of her. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. God has been mindful of her. Now, that word regard means to look with favor. It means to be mindful of someone. Uh, it means that God looked with a smile upon her. Back in verse 28, the angel Gabriel said this, Hail thou who art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Verse 30, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. She says, I'm rejoicing because God is mindful of me. Now, why be mindful of Mary? After all, who was she? Number one, she was a woman. Now, you must remember that back in this uh, society, women were not looked upon with, with great regard. But here she was, a woman, a Jewish woman who came from Nazareth, engaged to a poor carpenter, and she was a poor woman. And really, there was nothing special about Mary that God should regard her. Well, is there anything special about us? The psalmist said in Psalm 8 and verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Who are we that God should look with favor upon us? Well, the only reason he's done it is because of Jesus Christ. We are accepted in the Beloved. We have received grace because of Jesus Christ. When God looks upon us, he doesn't see creatures made of clay. He doesn't see people who rebel against his word. He looks upon man, and my Bible says, God so loved the world. And you know, in the Word of God, we have emphasized the grace of God. God doesn't save us because we're so good. And God doesn't bless us because we're so worthy. Listen to what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised, God hath chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. That's why she's magnifying the Lord. She said, I'm magnifying the Lord because God is mindful of me. Have you done that lately? Have you lifted your heart in praise to God because he's mindful of, of you? And secondly, Mary said, I'm praising the Lord because God is mighty for me. Notice what she says in verse 49. And he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Mary was one of many people in the Bible who could sing great things he hath done. Jesus sent that demoniac home. Luke chapter 8, verse 39, and said, Now you go home and tell those people what great things God has done for you. Samuel said this to the Jewish nation, didn't he? And uh, so did uh, uh, David when he spoke out to the glory of the Lord. As you go through Scripture, you find many people saying, Great things he has done. Listen to 1 Samuel 12, 24. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he hath done for you. Samuel said that. Listen to what David said, 1 Samuel 7, 21. For thy word's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know thee. Well, God is mindful of us, and God is mighty toward us. 
God has shared with us his love and his grace and his power. The Lord hath done great things for us, said the psalmist, whereof we are glad. Psalm 126 and verse 3. Are you rejoicing today because God is mindful of you and because God is mighty for you? I trust that you will. It will change your life. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.